In the previous lesson, we learned how to use the Bing Map API in order to have a map like this one, which is interactive, and without using one line of code. In this lesson, we're going to take it one step further, and I'm going to show you a few features of the Bing Map API that are very useful if you are trying to solve a problem in terms of vehicle routing optimization. So if you have a vehicle, you need to do deliveries, pickup, and you want to see what is the most optimal route, those features of Bing API map are for you. And in the third lesson, so the one that is coming after this one, I'm going to show you a tool which is in Excel and you will be able to download it that will allow you to do vehicle routing optimization. So basically, you'll just put a few assumptions and data points, click on a button, it will tell you what you should do, and then it will visualize the route for you. So it will tell you from which customer to which customer you have to go and what you have to do. And it's very intuitive, very easy to use. For now, let's look at those features and let's understand them and understand how it works. The first thing you need to do to get access to those features is you need to get a Bing Map API key. And this is a free key that you can get. I'm going to show you how to do it. In order to get a Bing API key, you type Bing key here in Google, and then you get your first result, which is under Microsoft, create a map app. You click on it, then you go down, basic key, get a free basic key. Then here you can sign in. If you have already an account, you can sign in. If not, then you'll create one by clicking here. You can put an email address. Then you say next. So if your Gmail account didn't work when you try to log in, you have to do the steps. So I'm going to create a password. Next, it will send you a code. You have to go to your email and get this code. I put it here. So if it's your first time in this page, you can click on yes, let's create a new account. Then you have some details to fill. So I'm going to fill them very quickly and we'll move to the next step. Once you create your account, you do my keys and then you have to fill these details. So the key is basic and then you can say for example, dev test, application name, I'm going to say app1, URL I don't have, I do create. Then you will see here that you get the key. So the key, you can copy it like this, and then it's copied, and you can use it in your Excel file. Once you get your key, you can go to the geocode sheet, and then you can start getting the latitude, the longitude with a certain confidence level for each of the location that you put here and you'll get a Google map link so you can check whether this is correct or not. So here if you see I have pasted six addresses some of them like this one is more detailed some of them is high level I put something that doesn't work and something vague. So if I click here geocode all rows you can see that I'm getting the latitude and longitude with my confidence. And as you can see, because this one is very vague, the confidence is low. And you can check it on these links that you get here. If you're not able to get a latitude or longitude, you can still do my methodology that I explained in the previous lesson, which is going to Google Maps, clicking on the map, and extracting the latitude and longitude. And this thing that you see here is actually a lot of code. You don't need to write this code. You can just copy paste it or use this sheet and the link will be in the description. But I'm going to show you a little bit so you understand what you can change. Basically, there are two kind of modules that you have here that are related to that. The first module is MGO codes and the second one is C Bing Maps REST request. In this one, it's all the requests to the API to get the information. So you don't need to do anything to this. What you could change is here. Here you can see there are several functions. Some of them pertains to the buttons that you can see here. 
For example, I click on geocode all rows, and this is what this function will do. But what I advise you to change, if you want to change something, are those constants. What do they do? Basically, as the name suggests, there are some constants to say, okay, my latitude will be in the first column in this sheet. My longitude will be in the second column. My confidence level will be in the third column. My location, fourth. My first row of data will be on the 13th row. So for example, you can see here that my 13th row is where I put my first location. If you wanted this to be, for example, in the second row, you can change it and adapt to your sheet and then the code will work perfectly fine. And as you can see, my latitude is in the first column, longitude in the second, confidence in the third, and so on. So you can play with this. You can play also with where the Google Map link will be posted on the sheet and put in which column you want it to be. So this is what I advise you to look at for geocoding. Now, geocoding is important for our distance time matrices. Why is that? Because the functions that we're going to use here to get the distance between two locations or to get the time between two locations are using latitude and longitude and not Chicago or Los Angeles or Texas. So what do you do first? You have to paste your latitude and longitude. So I've already done this and I took it from here. And what you need to do is combine them. What do I mean by combine them? So I'm just going to rewrite the formula. Equal latitude, then and you will add a comma, so the comma in double quotations, and longitude. You say enter, and you can drag it. And if you see here, we have the latitude, comma, the longitude. Now, this will be a parameter to be used here. So let's go into VBA to see those two functions so you can understand what they do. And then we're going to use them here in a very easy manner. And again, if you download this sheet, you can take those functions, you can play with it, or you can use the same Excel workbook and do your calculations. So if I go here, I have a module called distance time. In this module, I have two functions, get distance and get travel time. This function will give you the distance between two locations, and this one will give you the travel time between two locations. What are the parameters? The first one, is a start location, and this is a latitude and longitude. The second parameter is a destination, and again, it's a latitude and longitude. And lastly, it's your Bing API key that you got. So if you put those three, this will work and give you the number. Now, if you see here, there are some parameters that are used, travel mode, driving, and then you have distance in miles. Now, you will think that you'll get the answer in miles, but no because at the end it's multiplied by 1609. So one mile is equal 1.609 kilometers. So you'll get the distance in kilometers. Now, let's go back and let's try to use those formulas. We're gonna try to do it for this. So we're gonna delete this and we're gonna start with Chicago to Chicago. So I'm gonna do equal get distance because this is the function that you have in your VBA okay then get distance requires a start point a start point is Chicago but I can't use Chicago so what do I do I need to get the latitude and longitude of Chicago so I'm going to do equal VLOOKUP then I'm going to select Chicago comma this is my table so I select it I will use F4 here then I want the fourth column, so one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to use false. So this is my Chicago latitude longitude. Now I need Chicago from here. So again, V lookup. What is my lookup value? Chicago. Comma. What is my table? Same. F4. What is my column? Same. False or true? We always use false. And that's it. And next, you need the Bing API key. So I have it here. I can use it. Again, if you don't have it as Bing Maps key here as a variable, you can just put F4. Then you say, close parenthesis, enter. 
And as you can see, the distance is zero because those two locations are at the same place. Now I want to drag my formula. I want to drag it to the right and to the bottom. So what do I do? I need to also use a dollar sign here and a dollar sign here. So to drag it, I still want to fix the B column, but I want the 11 row to change. So if I go down, I want 12th row, etc. And here it's the opposite. So I will put a dollar sign on the 10 because I want the same row. If you're not very familiar with this, I'm going to put links in the descriptions to look at VLOOKUP formulas, also at the dollar sign, etc. And then we do enter. So now our function is good. We can just drag the function like this and then drag the function like this and then we can fix the format. So it will take a little bit of time to come. These are the data points. And then we can take the formats from here. We just click on home, the painter, and we get the format. We can also, if you want, add this with the comma. So we have a comma separator. And as you can see, the distance between Chicago and Brooklyn is 1279 kilometers and so on. The next one is the same, but instead of get distance, we're going to use what? The other function. So what I'm going to do is copy this. I'm going to put it here instead of the zero. And then instead of get distance, it's another function. It's get, see, travel time. And here it's referring to those cells. I don't want, I want to refer to those cells. So I'm just going to click here, drag this. Now I'm referring to the right cells. The range and the table and all is the same. I say enter. Obviously this is zero minutes. I do this and then I drag it down and you get the results. And this is in minutes, how long it will take to go from one place to the other. For the format, I can go here, click on the painter, click here, and I get the right format. So once you do this, you will get the travel times. And if you have a few data points, you'll be able to visually optimize your route and say, okay, if I try this route to this city, to the other city, this is the best option for me in terms of travel time, right? Now, obviously in the next lesson, I'm going to show you a tool that will do everything for you for much complex cases. The other thing I want to tell you is that this and this is using a few parameters, but not all the parameters that you can use with the Bing key. So if you go to the documentation, and this will also be in the description, you can see that there are some optional parameters. So for example, you have arrival time, you can avoid tolls, highway, ferries, etc. So that can increase your travel time. You have also a departure time that will make your travel time vary because obviously the traffic varies at different times of the day. What we have in this Excel is a simple case where it takes the average traffic, but not the traffic at a certain time period. You also can change the language. You can change the mode. You can do walking, cycling, etc driving for this we have driving and then you have region traffic model you have transit mode etc so you can look through this and then you can go to the next lesson to see how everything is incorporated